Welcome to WOW TV. My name is Angel and I'm here from the Wizards of Wright program. The WOW program is a part of the Educational Outreach Office here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Today you're going to learn about forces of flight and an airplane's movements while in the air. By experimenting with the variables, you will hopefully get your glider to fly farther and stay in the air longer. Are you ready to get started? Let's go! What do you already know about Orville and Wilbur Wright? Of course, they invented the airplane. They were the first to make a successful flight with a pilot at the controls with an aircraft powered by an engine. In December of 1903, Wilbur Wright stood on the beach in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, watching his brother Orville in the airplane above him. Orville flew the world's first successful piloted engine-powered airplane. They chose Kitty Hawk because it put them up on a hill. There were nice windy breezes and the area was sandy, which would help soften the landings in case of a crash. The first flight went for 120 feet and Orville stayed in the air for 12 seconds. As the brothers made more flights that day, the flights began to last longer. The Wright brothers probably never thought that over 100 years later, there would be close to 44,000 flights and 2.7 million airline passengers in the air every day. Some trips used to take months by boat and train, but today we can fly from one side of the world to the other in just hours. Wilbur was born in Indiana in 1867, and Orville was born right here in Dayton, Ohio in 1871. They and their five brothers and sisters grew up in Indiana and Ohio, moving back and forth a few times with their family. Orville and Wilbur loved to invent things and got interested in flying when their dad gave them a toy helicopter. Then they experimented with making their own helicopters and building and flying kites. They also built and experimented a lot with model gliders. Do you know what the difference is between a glider and an airplane? A glider is an aircraft that floats in the air, creating its own lift and does not use an engine. Completing this first flight wasn't easy or simple for the Wright brothers. They experimented for years with gliders, working on the perfect wing design, modeling them after studying birds. They also worked on better propellers and a lightweight engine. Using models helped the Wright brothers to learn more about balancing and positioning the weight of airplanes. If the nose or the front of the plane is too heavy, that weight will pull the airplane into a forward dive. The weight needs to be evenly distributed for safety throughout the wings, the fuselage, and the tail. Model airplanes are used to develop designs and test ideas in aviation. The information engineers learn makes airplanes safer, perform better, and be more efficient. Thanks to the successful experiments of Orville and Wilbur, the airplane is recognized as one of the greatest inventions of all time. Teachers, we will pause for a minute as you pass out the vocabulary pages included in the binder. We want the students to fill these in as we're going over all of the new words. In order to work with things that fly and experiment with our own gliders, we really need to have an understanding of flight. There are words that we need to be able to use correctly. Let's start with the four forces of flight that keep an airplane up in the air. They enable the plane to go up and down, forward, and then slow it down. They are lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Airplanes fly because they are able to generate a force called lift, which normally moves the airplane upward. The wings create most of the lift used by airplanes and is the force that holds an airplane in the air. Lift is caused by the airplane's forward movement, which is produced by the thrust of the engine. Thrust is the force that moves an aircraft in the direction of the motion. Aircraft use propellers, jet engines, or even rockets to cause thrust. How does that happen? There is an action, air is being pulled in, and then a reaction, air is pushed out in the opposite direction. If you've studied Newton's third law of motion, then I'm sure that makes sense to you. Drag is the force that slows down the forward motion of the airplane. You've felt drag before. It's that feeling when you put your hand out of a moving car window and feeling it pull back. It's the force that acts opposite to the direction of motion, so it tends to slow an object down. Weight is the force caused by gravity and is the downward pull toward the earth. When you jump up and down, it's your weight that brings you back down. 
The four forces of flight are what makes the plane move in different ways. Each force has an opposite force, and it balances that movement and works against it. Lift works opposite of weight. Thrust works opposite of drag. When the forces are all balanced, the plane is level. When lift and thrust are stronger than gravity and drag, the plane goes up. When gravity and drag are stronger than lift and thrust, the plane goes down. The air pressure is higher on the bottom side of a wing, and this helps push it upward. There are other words you need to learn to describe an airplane's movements through the air. There's roll, this happens by moving the wings up and down. Pitch, this happens when the nose of the plane moves up and down. And yaw, this is when the nose of the plane moves from side to side. The Wright Flyer was the first airplane to complete a takeoff and landing using a pilot to control the direction and altitude of the flight. Experimenting with different designs showed that for the safest and most balanced flight, the weight needs to be evenly distributed. The wings, fuselage, and tail are designed to balance and interact with each other. All planes have wings. The wings are shaped with smooth surfaces that are slightly curved, and when air moves around and under the wing, it produces the upward lift for the airplane. To continue that lift, the plane needs ailerons. They are connected to the wings and through hinges they are pushed downward to push the air down and make the wing tilt up. We also know that the shape of the wing determines the speed and altitude of the plane. The fuselage is the body of the plane. It is generally a long tube shape. The wheels and landing gear are attached to the fuselage. The plane's stability comes from the tail at the rear of the plane. There's a vertical stabilizer, the rudder, that affects the plane turning right or left. That's the yaw. And there's a horizontal stabilizer, the elevator, used to move the plane up or down. There's the pitch. Teachers, please give your students data sheets and organize your class into pairs or groups of four students. Students will all test their own glider, but the partner or group is good for discussion and brainstorming. We'll pause and wait while you do this. While we are paused, now would be a good time to mark a starting line on the floor with masking tape and set up your targets. Before you get started with your gliders, let's discuss a few things. They're easy to put together. Let me show you. I suggest you're careful though. They can be a bit fragile. Now that I have one together and your teacher can do this next, we'll use it for our control testing. Teachers, after you release it, measure how far the glider traveled. This is the distance control. Please record your results on the board so students can record it on their data sheets. Repeat this process with someone running a stopwatch to find the average time of flight. This is the time control. Please record your results on the board so students can record it on their data sheets. We now have the controls for a basic, unadjusted glider. Teachers pass out gliders to each student and before they build their glider, have them write their name on the fuselage. Review with them how to put the glider together and remind them to be careful since they can break. Students, when you are in your groups, discuss adjustments you would like to make to increase either the distance or flight time of your glider. Using the materials provided, post-it notes, binder clips, clay, add flaps and mass to the glider. You should help each other measure and time your flights. Remember, you can make adjustments to the wings, the fuselage and the tail. Before testing, make predictions on whether the gliders will reach your target. Let me point out that moving the wing forward or backward in the slot changes the center of weight and balance and can affect the way the airplane flies. Teachers, I'll turn this over to you now. After all of the testing is completed, ask your students to share what gave them a successful flight. Encourage them to use the new vocabulary words as they do. Discuss the flight test results and ask which adjustment helped the aircraft reach the target the best. Which adjustment affected their flight distance and time in the air the best and why? And did their predictions improve their flights? Okay, have a great time with this and thanks for joining me. Teachers, thank you for using this WOW lesson and please check out more at our website at wpafbstem.com.